Well, a new approach and one that's going to take some time to implement and going to take some time to figure out how to implement in a uh, sustainable and reasonable manner is something called the ecosystem approach. And really, the ecosystem approach takes into account all the factors that we can, the biological factors, the physical factors, to try to come up with a way of managing the ecosystem that supports the particular fish that we're targeting. So now we're not just paying attention to the particular target species itself, but we're paying attention to the things that keep it alive. The plankton, the planktivorous fishes, any kinds of links in the food web that may alter or may contribute to the abundance of a particular target fish. And ecosystem-based management of fisheries takes the whole ecosystem into account. It takes climate variability into account. It takes El Nino and La Nina into account. It takes other kinds of factors into account so that we can re fish at a reasonable level that's going to be sustained through the years. Because, of course, fishermen want to stay in business for decades. They don't want to just have a few short years of fishing and then out. So ecosystem-based management um, looks to be a larger picture, of course more complicated, but hopefully a better way of managing fish species than this sort of single species maximum sustainable yield approach. Here's an example of the kinds of things that an ecosystem-based approach would pay attention to. This is a, a benthic habitat with uh, many rockfish. This is what this habitat looked like prior to fishing. You see some deep sea coral, deep sea corals growing here. And after a trawl comes through, the habitat is completely destroyed. So whereas a maximum sustainable yield approach would pay little attention to the fact that the ecosystem has been completely destroyed now, an ecosystem approach says, look, these corals, this habitat was extremely important, provided shelter and food for young fishes, and we need to sustain it if we're hope going to sustain the fisheries that we're targeting. So this is one example in, in, of a way in which ecosystems-based fisheries management pays attention to the larger picture, the big picture, and the ecosystem that supports the fishes that we're interested in. Another aspect of ecosystems-based fisheries management has to do with recognition of wholesale changes in ocean conditions over decadal scales. We talked about uh, El Nino and La Nina previously, and we may have even mentioned at that time something called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. But we now have to recognize that every 20 to 30 years there is a possible shift from cool ocean temperatures in the Eastern Pacific to warm ocean temperatures in the Eastern Pacific. So a shift in the pools of cold water and warm water. We're currently in a cool regime and we have to recognize that this cool regime actually favors a different species. In this case it favors anchovies. Warmer water favors sardines. And it's been suggested that the crash of the Monterey sardines fisheries in the 1940s, the sort of folklore of, uh, or lore of Cannery Row and John, John Steinbeck novels, when that fisheries crashed in the 1940s, or let's say when, well, when the fisheries crashed, it had not only to do with the fact that sardines were being severely overfished, but when we had a regime shift in the ocean, when the Pacific Decadal Oscillation moved warmer water to the eastern Pacific, a, a condition, excuse me, moved cooler water to the eastern Pacific, a condition that didn't favor the sardines, they couldn't handle it and their populations plummeted. So we have to recognize in ecosystems that there are going to be natural changes that are going to favor one species or another. And until we understand those scales of change, both on multi-annual scales, multi-decadal scales, even centuries-long scales, until we have a good handle on ocean climate and how that affects the abundance of fishes, how that affects food webs, then it's going to be difficult to manage fish in a responsible way. But certainly recognition now that the Pacific Decadal Oscillation 
and a shift between a cool regime and a warm regime favoring either sardines or anchovies recognition of this is an important step forward in trying to manage fisheries in a responsible way of course aquaculture is another um, hot item right now in fact with the demand for fisheries accelerating um, rapidly many um, oceanographers many fisheries managers even governments are now putting a lot of stock and money into aquaculture of course aquaculture has its own attendant problems with fish waste with habitat destruction and those kinds of things as one person says we're trying to do in a decade what agriculture did in a hundred or a thousand years trying to learn how to farm the oceans but there certainly is great promise in aquaculture and it's certainly something that we need to continue to look at and continue to think about and continue to manage in a responsible way if we hope to keep um, people from starving to death um, by the increasing human population by keeping fish stocks uh, abundant for people to feed upon And a very great movie to go see in this is a movie called Empty Oceans, Empty Nets. Um, and they have a follow-up one about aquaculture. So I suggest if you're interested in these fisheries issues, and we'll watch this video in our classes, um, take a look at these excellent videos. Um, search on the Seafood Watch, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch website. Check out some of the other websites devoted to overfishing as a topic because the choices we make as consumers when we go and eat a can of tuna fish versus um, something like uh, uh, Bonita or so something like um, the other kind of tuna, the, the tuna that's better that I can't think of right now at the moment. When we make those seafood choices, when we sit down and eat sushi, when we um, take salmon out of uh, the supermarkets and put it on our grill, those are choices that affect the ocean and those are ways if we're responsible about the fish that we eat and if we pay attention to the kinds of fishes that are produced in sustainable fisheries then we're making a positive contribution to the world and we're making a positive contribution to fisheries um, people who are trying to fish in a responsible way of course there's also some great um, tools on the websites as well and I urge you to check all of these things out and I hope you've enjoyed this lecture and of course there's a lot more about fisheries and a lot more about this issue um, that we could go into but we don't have time for that but if you have any questions about it or concerns or or want to share some information you found out about fisheries or overfishing or even food webs feel free to email me have a great day